Welcome to Major Keys. I'm here with Olympic gold medalist pole vaulter Katie Najat. I'm so excited to have her here today. Uh, first, congratulations. Uh, and second, what has it been like returning from Tokyo as a gold medalist? Oh, it's been unbelievable, very overwhelming. Um, it's just crazy just seeing the amount of support that I've gotten, and especially in the Cleveland area, just my hometown has been insane. It's just been the coolest experience. And like I said, very overwhelming, but I'm so appreciative of all of it. So well, congratulations again. And the first question I have for you is tell me your, your sports journey in 60 seconds. Okay. So from where you found sport doesn't have to be pole vaulting or track, uh, but, but what is the totality, I guess, of your sports journey? Yeah. Um, I did sports the moment I could. I mean, I grew up doing you know, going skiing with my family and playing catch with my dad in the yard. And so just like, I, I loved sports immediately. I did gymnastics when I was little. And so when I saw pole vaulting, I knew I had to try it. And I begged my coaches to let me go try it. And they finally did, because I think they just didn't want to deal with, you know, it looks scary and it's technical. And so I, I think they were just not super keen on having a bunch of middle schoolers go do it, but I just, I insisted. And so I fell in love with it immediately and, you know, worked my way up to being a state champion in high school and then worked my way up to being a national champion in college and just kept going. And I think my career, while it has been a general upward trend, has had a lot of ups and downs along the way. So I've definitely... I've definitely learned a lot and I've had to learn how to kind of battle my way to be where I am now, but I, I wouldn't have it any other way. So. And I read that you, you went to Ashland university and I too am a D2 kid. Um, so ah. to see your upward trajectory and become a pro is, is awesome. Um, Thank you. what, uh, what you said, you know, sports taught to you, um, a lot. Why were sports so valuable to you growing up? I think what I love about sports is you just, you can't fake it. Like you're, you, like you can't, you know, you can want it more than someone else, but it's either you like you have it or you don't. And, and I think it's just kind of an equalizer. So you just, you have to work your butt off to get results. You can't just, you know, in this day and age with social media, it's all about, you know, instant gratification, immediate, you know, results, whatever. And so I think sports just teaches you, you can't, like you can't pay your way to the top. Like you, you, it's just, you have to just put in the work at every day. And at the level I'm at, everyone has talent and potential. I mean, everybody at this level has, yeah, talent and potential, but it's who can really harness that and, and turn it into something more. So I just, I really like that sports has taught me just how to work hard and and not to give up when, when it gets tough. So did you have any role models growing up that kind of showed you, you know, what you wanted to be in the future? I mean, I'm very passionate about young girls seeing athletes like you, who were those people for you? I mean, it's funny because pole vault, I really didn't know anything about pole vault past me just going to my club. So I didn't really even know it. You could do it professionally. So I didn't, I, the women I looked up to were like Mia Hamm and, you know, the, uh, Lisa Leslie, you know, just these phenom athletes and, and, but not specifically pole vault, but just, you know, people that worked really hard and, and were great at what they did. So I hope that now that pole vaulting is becoming a little more mainstream, I guess, <laughs> if you want to call it that, but it's just, it's out there more. And I do think one of the good things about social media is that it, it we have really cool action shots and videos that are, are getting out there. And I, I'm seeing just so many girls doing it now. And so hopefully I can be that person for someone. So, <laughs> Yes, I saw you have a, um, a lot of videos on your Instagram uh, for TikTok. And, and so yeah. I'm sure that that's, you know, reaching young girls and making them excited or about the potential of trying pole vaulting. But I got to be honest, me flying through the air on a pole. <laughs> it didn't sell it for me, but I'm sure for young that's girls. Fair. <laughs> and I think had I, like, I couldn't have started it any later because it's just, it's ridiculous, right? Like it's just, it goes against every normal fiber of your being to run full speed with a pole in your hand and launch yourself in the air. And I mean, I'm, 
I'm to this day a little afraid of it. Like I am kind of scared to pole vault, but you know, I've just learned, you know, the technique, the basically the, I guess the cues to help me combat that. And yeah, I just, yeah, I just hope that, yeah, as girls can see what I'm doing and be excited about it. But again, had I tried it any later, I, there's no way. (laughs) (laughs) All right. We're going to change gears a little bit. And I do a segment called It's a Vibe, all right? So what is something that you're into right now? Could literally be anything that you would say, it's a vibe. Oh, gosh. I, oh, that's, I mean, that's, I don't know. Um, could be clothes, shoes, a guess, show. Would be, yeah, I guess <laughs> I, I guess at lately I've just been wearing the same pair of Air Force Ones, the all yeah. white Air Force Ones that I'm just in love with. And I've been wearing them with absolutely everything. So I guess that would be <laughs> my. All right. Job. All right. And then we're going to move to uh, a lightning round. Okay. So I'm sure you've done one of these very quick answers. All right. Yeah. So what's your favorite women's sports moment of all time? Oh, I think I have to pick mine. I- <laughs> fair. That's fair. That's, I mean, that sounds like very divish, but I think, yeah, winning, winning the gold medal and coming back. I think, so I was the first woman to ever, first pole vaulter, man or woman ever to need all three attempts at my opening height at the Olympics and then go on to win. So I, I mean, I don't know if I'm more embarrassed or proud of that statistic, <laughs> but um, I just, I like to think that I showed everyone and myself that you know it's not over till it's over so <laughs> right persevering love that what is your favorite memory from Tokyo besides winning um I I really liked that so we had an athlete lounge down in our in our building that we'd sit and and watch all the track and field and the baseball team would be down there and we'd kind of flip back and forth between baseball and track and and I think just getting to really enjoy the meet with the team and just every night there was someone in every event so it just it was really exciting getting to cheer everyone on was there any food that you particularly liked so I mean the thing about the the cafeteria was that it the dining hall I guess is that there were just so many options I just loved how many options there were and there was nothing that I had that was like this is the best food I've ever had because you know they're catering to the masses but I, I did really like just the diversity. Um, there was a halal station, there was sushi. I mean, and granted it was like cooked tuna, it was cooked shrimp. So it wasn't anything crazy, but just, I don't think they wanted to deal with any food poisoning. (laughs) So, um, so yeah, I, I really liked the, the Asian stations and the halal station, but they had something for everybody, which was great. All right. Who's your favorite athlete? Uh, I, I, it's funny because I go back and forth all the time, but I think the one that consistently stays my favorite is Phil Mickelson. I grew up like watching golf. My dad played golf. I played golf. So I would say Phil Mickelson. He's just great. And what's your dream sporting event to attend? Oh, that's good. Um, probably the masters just again in tribute to my dad loving golf and and I I grew up watching it I think unless the Browns make the Super Bowl then going to that Super Bowl will be like the end all be all for me (laughs) all right and your goat track and field athlete oh I have to go with Allison Felix I mean she is the best and I was just floored like she she congratulated me when I made the team just walking past her because she had just finished a race and I was getting interviewed and it's like oh my gosh thanks (laughs) you know me (laughs) I don't think you know me but like you're acting like you know me and that's huge well I'm sure she knows you now that you (laughs) Uh, that's awesome all right and to wrap up so what is one major key? So the show is called Major Keys. What is one major key that you would give to young people, young girls, um, you know, who are want to either follow in your footsteps or go on to pursue something in sports? Yeah, I, I think something that I hope that I can show people is that if it doesn't happen immediately, it doesn't mean that it's not going to happen. It's, it takes hard work and persistence. And yes, some people you look at and they just get everything immediately, but I, 
it took me five years to make my first team. It took me until my senior year to win, you know, the state meet and then my senior year to win the national meet. So it just, it's taken me time, but as long as you can stay persistent and, you know, motivated and just, you know, find those little goals along the way, I, yeah, I just hope that I can show that's what I can show people. Well, uh, again, I'm like obsessed with the Olympics. So I was <laughs> definitely always tuned in, but congratulations. It's been awesome to have you. Um, I Thank think you. a great role model, especially in the track and field world, but just in general for young girls um, to follow and emulate. So thank you so much thank for your time. You. No, thank you. This was great. I got the keys.